Hey guys, Jeffrey Leon. Welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. I've titled this discussion that we're having today, guys, The Image to the Beast, Sterilized Within, to Sterilize Without, Cognizance of the Presence of Antichrist. Okay, guys. This is actually a lesson from August 22nd, 2020. We're going to go over this material again. And today, I'm going to upload this video. Today is actually September Sunday, September 13th, 2020. So let's get right into this. The image of the beast appears in its full operational capacity in Revelation 13, 15. that verse and he had power to give life unto the image of the it, unto the image to the beast that the image to the beast should both speak and would cause that as many would not worship the image to the beast should be killed so the image of the beast demands satanically worship on pain of death. If you will not worship, you will not submit your souls to subjection and service to the image of the beast, the image of the beast is going to kill everyone that will not spiritually take its mark and be subject to its spiritual power. So this passage of scripture makes that absolutely crystal clear. This is the full operational capacity of the image to the beast as it is laboring for today to bring forth in our country, the United States of America. So, the image of the beast appears in its full operational capacity in Revelation 13, 15, as it ascended in its legislative and ecclesiastical place, seated in the heart of man, Romans 3, 13, which is the transference of satanic captivity from the image of the beast to its subjects and the people that it's trying to transform into the image of Satan that we've gone over several times in previous lessons which states their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used deceit and the poison of ass is under their lips their their throat is literally the the message it brings the message of death for the entire human race their message is nothing but deceit it's poison disguised as lemonade and the very transfer of satanic captivity is is within their words. So Revelation 14, 9 and 10, and the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. So the image of the beast appears in its full opera, operational capacity in Revelation 13, 15, as it ascended in, in its legislative and ecclesiastical place seated in the heart of man Romans 3 13 Revelation 14 9 and 10 this is the consummation of the harlot and the beast sexual and monetary control of all flesh on pain of death as manifest in Revelation 13 16 and 17 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast the image of the beast should both speak and would cause that was that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark or in the right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so we know the image of the beast beast brings the mark of the beast to all flesh revelation 13 15 through 17 it's the full operational capacity and the constitution of satan residing in the heart of man so the image of the beast appears in its full operational capacity, Revelation 13, 15, as it ascended in its legislative and ecclesiastical place, seated in the heart of man, Romans 3, 13, Revelation 14, 9, and 10. This is the consummation of the harlot and the beast and sexual and monetary control of all flesh on pain of death, as manifest in Revelation 13, 16, and 17, as all those who sold their souls to Satan appear in their own glory and their permanent spiritual seats in the kingdom of hell at Revelation 17, 1 through 6. We discussed in previous lessons that Revelation 17, 1 through 6 is the final place, it's the final seat spiritually of all souls that receive the mark of the beast and that are marked with the mark of the beast and are seated in the kingdom of hell at the second advent of Jesus Christ. 
and it's the graduation scale. It's the, it's the graduation scale that the angel is beholding of all the dead souls that are captive to Satan in Revelation 18, 1 and 2, and all the demons of hell are now incorporated upon all flesh and captured have captured the spirit of antichrist is in their blood the demons of hell are in their bodies they are inhabited with satanic captivity and they are permanently seated by the mark of the beast in the kingdom of hell that's revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. also sexual and monetary control is not ex explicated in revelation 17 1 through 6. it was a word picture given to john so that we can he wrote it down in the simplest terms that he could so we could write it in our hearts and repaint this humongous picture if a picture is worth a thousand words this one's worth billions of souls and we could repaint it in our heart and get an idea of what God was trying to communicate to us. Sexual and monetary control is not explicated in this passage, but it is implied throughout every verse in Revelation 17, 1 through 6. So, and it is also the consummation of the harlot and the beast. You'll notice, and I, and I saw Revelation 17, 3 and 4, and I saw the woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman raised, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The woman is in, a, is in an illicit relationship with death. The dragon is Satan, as manifested by Revelation chapter 7, verses chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, excuse me, and she's she's in a list, she's in a fornicating relationship with Satan. She's allowed Satan into her religious and her theology, and she is actually attempting sexual and monetary control with the image of the beast over all flesh in our world. So, and we discussed previously Okay, we won't go through that just yet. That's at the end of this. Okay, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Let's go ahead and read this. I'm trying to go through a lot of material with you guys and give you guys as much as I can to get you rooted and grounded in love so when you go back over these verses, God can speak to you and, and impart to you the silver and the gold that's underneath the surface. We know that Satan is completely, it is, the children of Satan are very frustrated because they can't get anything out of the Word of God. You're not going to get anything out of the Word of God while you're trying to murder God's children for, and so you can sexually abuse them and you can steal people's money. Philippians chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more knowledge and in all judgment and that you may prove, approve things that are excellent excellent and that you may be sincere with that and without offense until the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God 1 Corinthians 2 7 through 14 the image of the beast does not receive anything spiritually everything that he comes to the church with is stolen it's all stolen just as he steals souls and it's all fraudulent anything that he has is just poison disguised as lemonade so Isaiah chapter 1 verses 5 through 9 why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge, in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had, had left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. And this is a parallel. This last verse, verse 9, is a parallel to what uh, the prophet Paul says in Romans chapter 9. We're not going to go into that today. But here we have one depiction by Holy Father God, I believe a prophecy of the spiritual status of the image to the beast. As the image of the beast poured out the spirit of Antichrist upon the children of God, 1, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, as it labored to captivate all flesh as children of Satan with the mark of the beast, a.k.a. the abomination of desolation, Matthew 24, 15 and verse 22, Galatians chapter 4, verse 27, and Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, the, the ten virgins closed with closed hearts, sealed spiritually unto Satan as they as the exchange was made perfect by the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. Revelation chapter 13, bit 15 through 17. So here in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, I didn't write this down, but this, it looks to me like 
verse 5 and 6, and I, this first chapter of Isaiah, is a depiction of God looking down on the image of the beast and seeing the, the fraudulent manifestation of their claim to righteousness and to be the children of God, when in actuality, in actuality they are the children of Satan. So, Matthew chapter not Matthew chapter six verse nineteen through twenty one is a parallel to these two two verses here in, in the first chapter of Isaiah and verse five and six it says lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal this is a manifestation of souls that are rotting because they've set their affections on things of the world and not on things of God and that's what the transfer of the mark of the beast about is about it's about horizontal captivity in Satan's kingdom rather than vertical acceptance by faith and grace into the kingdom of heaven. So it looks to me that we have here in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 and 6, we have actually a depiction by Holy Father God. Of the, it's God looking down and when the mark of the beast comes in full on the, on the image of the beast, which I believe it has today as I speak right now, because Soliciting child murders to steal money and to sexually abuse kids. You got the mark of the beast. Sorry, that's all there is to it. But anyway, um, this is obviously to me, Isaiah 1, 5, and 6, is a depiction of how God looks on the souls of the image to the beast as it is doing its labors to capture the entire world in sexual and monetary control. And it is actually entering the false apostate Christian churches and soliciting sexual and monetary control through a false manifestation of righteousness within the, the body of Christ. So, and here's another reference to the body of Christ. Verse 8, And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage and a vineyard, as a lodge and a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Here's a reference right here. This is a direct reference of sexual captivity of false apostate Christianity in the last days. It's a parallel to Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 where the salt loses its savor and Jesus Christ declares the spiritual stature in the eyes of the image of the beast of those that are serving it in the false apostate body of Christ as good for nothing and their treatment at the hands of the image of the beast when the image of the beast realizes that it has horizontal immunity to kill God's children and was once, I mean, these have people have the mark of the beast. These aren't God's children. These people have the mark of the beast. They're besieged as, as a woman in a garden of cucumbers. All the image of the beast has surrounded all these congregations. Death has surrounded and its full operational manifestation of its, its highest operational capacity has surrounded the false apostate churches. And Matthew chapter five, verse 13, it's over sexual control. They're going to be forced into sexual relationships on pain of death. The Bible makes this very crystal clear by the image of the beast. And the image of the beast looks at his servants in the Christian churches as good for nothing. And when this comes to the full, they're going to be but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Their lives are going to be required of them. They thought that they could put the death sentence on the true children of God and, and for a little bit more money allow the beast, the image of the beast into their churches for sexual and monetary control over the population. God says, not so. I'm going to render you unto you a double what you brought upon the, the glory and grace of my name in this world. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And this is the treatment that they are going to get at the, the false apostate churches at the hand and of the image of the beast. Let's read this again, Isaiah chapter 1, 8. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, and as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. It's about sexual control. The image of the beast wants to commit murders to force everybody into its unto its own sexual dominion and domain. Okay, verse 9. Ex and that's another, uh, verse 9 is a reference to the, the true body of Christ, which is described as the remnant people of God. So, the Hebrew word desolate, appearing in, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 5 through 9, where it says in verse 7, Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire, strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Remember, the, the Bible is a book. For spiritual people. It's a book, it's a roadmap for spiritual people to get out of satanic captivity in our world 
and to be sealed with the seal of God in the final moments of earth's history. God's more concerned about people being justified by faith than he is about the destruction that the image of the beast is going to do to our world. So the first and foremost, it's about God is trying to save souls. This def desolate that appears here is first and foremost a reference to the spiritual status of the people that are residing under the auspices of satanic captivity when the image of the, when the mark of the beast comes to the fullness in our world. But it is also the, this Greek, the, excuse me, this Hebrew word desolate appearing in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 through 9, Shema Ma, is the exact same Hebrew word appearing in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 23 through 31 where Holy Father God ex explicates the destruction of an entire race, the human race, as evil men willfully bowed down to the lordship of Satan, exchanging their souls, life or death, in the presence of God. Romans 7, 12 through 14, to serve satanic administrative control in a temporal reign without the indwell presence of Holy Father God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. The image of the beast perpetuating the threat of souls to appear, to appear before Antichrist as children to receive their father. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. This is the thief that is mentioned. The thief that, that we know the image of the beast is the highest operational, it's the constitution of Satan seated permanently in the heart of man, and it's the government of Satan as it is going to be made manifest in our world in a temporal, wherever this reign may appear. So, Matthew 24, 43, but if the good man of the house had known and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. This is the manifestation of satanic occupation as it appears with the spirit of Antichrist appearing in the blood of all the saints in Revelation 17 verse 4 and it is a manifestation of the demons of hell inhabiting the bodies of all those that receive the mark of the beast in, in Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 through 45. Ezekiel 28 1 through 5 being a parallel to Revelation 17 1 through 6 the full manifestation of the kingdom of hell and all the souls of, of Satan's children seated and demanding the presence of Antichrist. And of course, Matthew chapter 24, verse 43 through 45, which I just stated. Revelation 18, 1 and 2, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 18, 1 and 2 is actually a manifestation. This one angel is beholding satanic occupation as it has unified with the flesh of man and seated all souls in their final seat in the kingdom of hell as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, 1 through 6 and Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1 through 5. This is the fall of Babylon, horizontal immunity, rape, murder, pedophilia, and extortion, the image of the beast as, a, as, as judgment falls on them in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. And that's... Let's keep going forward. The sterilization of cognizance of evil within man. Romans 7, 12 through 14. That's what this is about. It's about man claiming horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin is the outward manifestation of his inward habitation of the spirit of Antichrist and the demons of hell telling him that he stands innocent and righteous while he's a child of Satan while he stands in condemnation before the face of Holy Father God. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy, just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Only by the presence of God is man cognizant of the depth of of injury to his own soul as he imparts sexual and monetary control on other people on pain of death because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. What do I care? I can stick a gun to this person's head and rape these children because nobody's going to do anything to me about it because I have horizontal immunity as given to me by the state of Texas for iniquity, transgression, and sin. So what do I care if I threaten to kill people 
because I'm immune to prosecution. It's not no pain, no skin off my teeth. So that's what it's about. That's what the beast is laboring for today. That's why he's soliciting murders of God's children to satanically corrupt not only the United the state constitutions, but the United States constitutions at the federal level as manifested in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. So this actually, this laboring for for horizontal immunity that appears in Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the Mother of Horror and some abominations of the earth. This is actually man residing, the soul of man residing in the fullness of satanic captivity as he is no longer vertical, re vertically receiving of the glory and grace of God as manifested in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. Horizontally, they are captured, and that's that's what that is. The manifestation of the image of the beast laboring for horizontal immunity, for iniquity, transgression, and sin, and laboring to write laws while they're soliciting murders for sexual and monetary control over the population. That's the manifestation of the inward condemnation residing in their souls and the mark of the beast. So what happens as man receives the mark of the beast, he's sterilized inwardly from cognizance, from, in, from, from the depth, the full height and depth and breadth of injury that he does within his environments and to the souls of the children of God. He's sterilized within. He doesn't care because nobody can do anything to him for rape, murder, pedophilia, and extortion. The inward dwelt presence of God has fled from him, and the outward manifestation of that is claiming immunity and laboring for of the mark of the, the outward manifestation of the mark of the beast is his labors to gain horizontal immunity and for the state of Texas to say, okay, when you commit this murder, when you rape this child of God, you're not guilty of anything. Nobody can get up on the news and tell anybody because you raped a child, you murdered a child, and you extorted money from your neighbor. And that's the manifestation of the mark of the beast as it resides in the image to the beast today. Ecclesiastes, chap Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retrain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that ward. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Ecclesiastes 9, 1. For all this I considered and in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. No man can receive, no man can retain the spirit of God if God withdraws that and imparts the mark of the beast on a soul and no man is cognizant of love or hatred without the indwelled presence of God even a passive manifestation with the fruit of the spirit Galatians 5 22 and 23 residing in his soul and the mark of the beast sterilizes man from even that passive manifestation of the fruit of the spirit residing in their souls and makes them a child and a captive up to Satan with the mark of the beast. It sterilizes them from cognizance of injury that they do to souls around them. And then they turn around and they sterilize their environment so people can't find out that they're concealing iniquity, transgression, and sin in the kingdom of hell from the public consciousness. So this is the very work of the image to the beast laboring to hide its illicit works from the public cognizance, the fact that it has the mark of the beast and impose the mark of the beast on the entire population by getting the entire population to endorse horizontal immunity and the kingdom of darkness. And I got news for you. If you, if you endorse horizontal immunity under the auspices of thinking that you're doing something good, I got news for you. It's coming right back to you. The Bible says that there's not going to, it makes it very clear, there's not going to be one household in this world that's not going to receive injury from this. Matthew 10, 21. So anyway, um, so sterilization of cognizance of evil within man, I don't care, nobody can do anything to me while I commit these crimes. Romans 7, 12 through 14, Ecclesiastes 8, 8, increases man's capacity to serve Satan. 
the beginning of death for all flesh. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And remember, we, just, we studied in a previous lessons that the image of the beast is the beginning of death for all flesh. It's the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, and it is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, attempting to mark all to capture all souls into satanic captivity with the mark of the beast. This parallels satanic ascension laboring to appear without. As the image of the beast labors to, for horizontal immunity and to impose the mark of the beast, sterilizing cognizance of evil, which is the removal of glory, the spirit of grace, which sterilizes men within of cognizance of, e of, of evil, and then to sterilize the population without from them, so they'll be ready to they'll be ready to receive antichrist when he appears. That's what this is. Horizontal immunity does that. It, it, horizontal immunity and its false claim. Anybody that claims they're, that they're they're immune to the presence of God, Romans seven twelve through fourteen is a liar, and the truth is not in them. For the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. One Timothy chapter six verse fifteen and sixteen. No man has immortality. To claim that you're horizontally immune for iniquity, transgression, and sin is to claim you're immortal. It's a slap in the face to God, and it's one hundred percent a lie because no man has immortality, but Jesus Christ. No man has it. All men are mortal. They're all subject to death. And any man that claims that he has immortality is a liar and a fraud. And that's the ultimate manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist residing within his soul. So, sterilization, the image of the beast, labors for sterilization of cognizance of evil within man. Romans 7, 12 through 14, Ecclesiastes 8, 8. This increases man's capacity to serve Satan. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. And this parallels satanic ascension laboring to appear without. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, a messenger of the gospel. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. It's poison. What the image of the beast is doing now, claiming that they're ministers of God, as they're soliciting child murders, murders and they're pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, is actually laboring to deaden cognizance, to sterilize the population so they're not cognizant when the Antichrist comes claiming that he's their salvation and he appears before them as an angel of light. And it's nothing but poison disguised as lemonade and it's the mark of the beast because he's 100% spiritually dead and if you had... If you had the seal of God, you would know it was the spirit of Antichrist. But since you don't have the seal of God and you have the mark of the beast, you don't know the image of the beast as he's soliciting child murders and he's trying to rape your wives and molest your kids and steal your money. You don't know that the image of the beast is standing right in front of you getting ready to steal your soul and while pouring out the spirit of Antichrist because you're not listening to the Holy Spirit of grace. So this is death seated in its highest operational capacity within man, man abiding in suspended animation without the indwelt dwell presence of God. 1 John 4, 16, Matthew chapter 24, 4, verse 10 and 12, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 21, and the brother shall deliver up the brother, the brother to death, the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. This is what's going to happen in the house of every single soul, Matthew 24, 43, that receives the mark of the beast. God is not stupid. They are no longer residing in the glory and the grace and the presence of Holy Father God. They all have the mark of the beast. The Spirit of God has withdrawn. There's no love in their households, and they all hate, and they all want to kill each other. They're all worshiping the image of the beast, and they're all... The image of the beast coming in every house. He's coming for sex and money in every house in this country. They'll come in every house. That that those gold and that gold and silver bullion you bought 25 years ago with your Mastercard, when all the nations of this world go bankrupt because God said the silver and gold is mine, they're coming for it. 
They're coming for it. And you know what? The Bible says they're going to get it too. Your own family member is going to turn against you. The Bible says that, that when they shall be hungry, they shall look upward and curse their king and their God, and they shall be driven into darkness. This is the manifestation of the mark of the beast and its full operational capacity as it resides in every single house in this country because of false apostate Christianity that labored for a national Sunday tax with the image of the beast, the, the false apostate churches in a in a in a in an illicit relationship with death in its highest operational capacity, the image of the beast, Revelation chapter 17, 3 and 4, imposing a national Sunday tax so the image of the beast can claim it's a good person while it's sexually abusing the children of God. So God is not stupid. Every single person that doesn't receive the seal of God in this world, this is what's coming to your house. Matthew 24, 43. But if the good man of the house had known and what watched the thief would come, he would have watched and not had suffered his house to be broken up. This is the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist in their souls, contaminating their blood. Revelation 17, 4. And I saw a woman sit upon her scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten. Excuse me. And I saw a woman sit of Yes, I saw a woman, that's Revelation 17, 3. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and death with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. She's making everybody drink of the spirit of Antichrist as the image of the beast. The, the government of Satan, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, is coming for sexual and monetary control over all flesh. And it's happening right now today. It's happening in our churches. It's happening without and every home in this country as the image of the beast claims it's a good person and you need to write laws so I can take care of every single one of you. So this is a man abiding in suspended animation without the indwelled presence of God in fullness. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. When man is no longer residing in love, he is spiritually dead and he has the mark of the beast. He no longer even has a passive manifestation of the fruit of the, fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And Ecclesiastes 8, 8, no man hath power over, to, over the spirit to retain the spirit. When God withdraws and says, that's enough, you've tortured my children enough, I'm going to leave every single one of you with the mark of the beast in this world. The Bible says all the cities of this world are going to be broken down because the image of the beast is sexually abusing God's children, and he's claimed horizontal immunity while he's doing it, and he's stealing the entire world's money while he's doing it to enrich his own bank account and to fulfill his own fleshly lusts so nobody can hurt him while he's maintaining sexual and monetary control over the world as manifested in Revelation chapter 17, 1 through 6. So, Death is seated in its highest operational capacity within man, the image to the beast, to appear at the baptism of all flesh unto the ends of the earth as Satan's children. The baptism of all flesh as Satan's children unto the ends of the earth appears in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 13 that we've gone over extensively in previous lessons just recently in the last month. This is what Paul spoke of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Concerted efforts to sterilize planet Earth, restrained by God, Revelation 18, 1 and 2, Matthew 24, 22. Except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened to shew forth judgment, eradicating sin and sinners by the will of man and the full manifestation of satanic captivity from eternity. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 and 35, Galatians chapter 3 verse 22 through 24, and Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14 through 19 were the full manifestation. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 14 through 19, we have a small glimpse of the paranoia, the, the psychological pain that's going to come upon the image to the beast as it is captive to Satan when it, when it has imposed horizontal immunity and it's, cl it's claimed all the souls as children of Satan and it claims that God cannot come back and render judgment upon its flesh. These are some of the terrors and the pains that are going to come upon it and what it's going to do to the children of Satan in the final moments before Jesus Christ returns at the second advent. It's going to be terrible. Isn't this is I mean the Bible the, the Bible indicates here in Proverbs chapter 4 that the image of the beast will not even be able to sleep.
Proverbs 4, 14, and 19. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. This is a de direct reference to Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. The great harlot, apostate Christian churches, they, are, they have drunk of the spirit of Antichrist. They are full of them. They have the full manifestation of the mark of the beast. And they are, the Bible says that the terrors and the pains of satanic captivity, they are not even going to, going to be able to sleep unless they are, they are causing people pain and suffering and unless they're killing souls. That's what this passage is indicating in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19. Jeffrey, Ch Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the very throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you are abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 10, excuse me, Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Thank you.